I'm Hilary. I'm going to do the first half of the webinar and then I'll hand over to Vary. Um, so first of all, um, just um, a bit of a conflict of interest slide. Um, Vary and I are both funded by the UK Medical Research Council and the Scottish Government. Um, and uh, much of what we're presenting today is based on work that we've done with support from the Copper and Strategic Methods Fund, um, which was a project called ICONS, although we're now calling it SWIM. Um, and as Dario mentioned, I am joint coordinating editor with Cochrane Public Health. Um, so I don't think there's anything else to declare. So the outline of the webinar today is we're splitting it into four sections. We're going to first of all talk a bit about um, sort of what we mean by narrative synthesis and the use of it and why people use it. And then sort of talk a bit more about the issues that we've sort of come across when we've been doing a bit more work on defining it and working out what it really is, and then how um, things can improve when people use narrative synthesis. Um, like Dario said, I think we'll probably take questions of clarification after each section, and then there will be time, hopefully, for um, some sort of meteor discussion at the end of the webinar. I'm going to talk a bit about um, what we mean by this and sort of terminology around narrative synthesis. Oh, golly, what's happened here? There we go. So, um, narrative, sort of the term narrative and narrative review is often used as a sort of generic term. And I've often heard people, my own colleagues, sort of talk about saying, well, we want to do a narrative review, not a systematic review. Um, I'm not quite sure what they mean by it. And when I ask them, I don't think they're very sure themselves. But sometimes you will use, uh, you will hear sort of this sort of terminology used. And then you'll also hear a lot of other terms you'll come across when you're reading about approaches to do reviews, like critical interpretive synthesis, or framework synthesis, or realist, or qualitative synthesis. And many of these will use a narrative approach when they're actually doing the pooling together of the data and the synthesis. And then there's another sort of area of confusion about qualitative review or review of qualitative data. So for me, I think it's important to be clear whether or not people mean a qualitative review as being a review of qualitative data or whether they mean it doesn't include a meta-analysis meta of effect sizes, because I think people do sometimes get confused about that too. Um, and I have seen certainly in them like the oral health literature, I've quite often seen qualitative review used to mean a non-statistical synthesis um, of intervention data. So it's not a review of qualitative data. So just to be clear for today, our focus is on the synthesis of quantitative data when you don't um, conduct a meta-analysis of standardised effect sizes. Um, so when we've been um, doing this work, you know, we've sort of found that there's been a lot of confusion about terminology, and we were keen to look at a sort of definition of see if there was a definition of narrative synthesis. And this was really the sort of clearest definition that we came across. This was in the ESRC guidance on narrative synthesis that was published 14 years ago now. So this says, well, they mean narrative synthesis to be a synthesis of findings from multiple studies relies primarily on the use of words and text to summarise and explain. It may involve manipulation of statistical data, but the defining characteristic is that it adopts a textual approach to the process of synthesis to tell the story of the findings from the included studies. So I think this is kind of helpful, but when we've been discussing this with our sort of colleagues and collaborators involved in this work, I think there's been agreement that this is also quite vague. Um, and doesn't really tell you what people mean by narrative synthesis. Um, so then we've had more discussions that could have gone on for years, I think, about what we really mean by it. And I think when we look at the term synthesis, we thought, well, that does assume that you're pulling things together that are at some level have something in common that justify you bringing things together. And that the term synthesis means that you're doing more than just summarising one thing after another. You're actually adding value to the data or the evidence by combining things together rather than just summarising one stud study after another. So obviously, when you do a meta-analysis or statistical synthesis, that's quite um, conceptually easy to understand, that you're adding data from a number of studies 
you're pulling them, and by pulling them, you're getting increased power and precision, hopefully, um, in the overall effect size estimate. Um, so I think that makes sense. But when you're talking about narrative, it's more difficult. And I've just put a note here to say that although we use the term meta-analysis often to, you, to mean um, the statistical pooling of standardized effect sizes, at a higher level, the term meta-analysis can also just mean pulling together of really anything. Um, so I have heard people call synthesis of qualitative data meta-analysis. So another area of potential confusion. But just to be clear for today, when we say meta-analysis, we mean having a forest plot and then synthesizing the data in uh, the standardized effect sizes in a statistical way. Um, so then for narrative synthesis, we're saying, well, it's a bit different from a statistical meta-analysis, um, and it involves textually describing the overall effect and noting variations across the data. And because it's synthesis, the end product is more than a simple summary of one study after another. But I think there's still kind of potential for quite a lot of confusion. And this issue of synthesizing data is important. I think what often happens in reviews when people can't do a meta-analysis is they do a lot of data extraction and they tease out every little bit of a study and they separate things by different types of interventions, different components of interventions, different contexts, different um, outcomes. And what you end up is something like this. This is um, where somebody's taken everything to bits and they've organized it really nicely and it looks really pretty. But I'm not sure how useful this really is. It's as if the person who's done this has kind of stopped short of actually finishing the job. Because what you really want from all these different components is bringing it back together again and making something that's going to be useful. So very often when people are dealing with heter heterogeneous data, they break things up, but they don't then bring it back together again. Um, <clears throat> so then we've looked a bit at, because we really have really struggled with trying to define what narrative synthesis is, we thought, well, we'll just look at um, whether it's used or not. And so we looked at a uh, um, year's worth of Cochrane reviews, so about 700 reviews, um, and we found that around half of them rely completely on meta-analysis, but the rest of the reviews use either a mix of meta-analysis and narrative approaches, or only narrative. So this suggests that the sort of narrative approaches to synthesis are actually very common. Um, and this is not just the uh, case um, in a couple of groups within Cochrane that publish a lot of reviews. We found this was common across almost all the Cochrane review groups um, in the reviews that they published. Although narrative approaches are more common when reviews are including a mix of randomized and non-randomized studies. But actually that makes me think that narrative approaches may increase because we are being sort of encouraged to really incorporate more diverse sources of data um, to help make reviews more relevant. So the kind of, sort of one of our thoughts has been that narrative synthesis is a bit of the Cinderella of the synthesis world. It seems to do an awful lot of work, it's supported, it's, in, it's sort of incorporated into around half of Cochrane reviews, but people don't really talk about it very much, and it's a bit of a dirty little secret. And that's probably because, as we've sort of talked about, there does seem to be an awful lot of confusion about what it is. There's very little guidance, the terminology is not clear, it's not well defined, um, and we have wondered whether or not really narrative synthesis fits within a systematic review approach. 